All right, November 3rd, new area, though near some other areas. Going up a steep trail. I'm at the bottom here, and this appears to be a ground-type fence. I don't know if there's much of anything up above there. A few tree lanes, but not enough to wonder whether they're natural or whether they've been put there. But I'll find out hopefully in a few minutes. Okay, this is uphill from the uh, ground fence. A bunch of lanes up there. I don't know how well you can see them in the ca camera here. Now they could be natural, or they could have been put there. Depends on what I find again further up. Or it could be an area that they just come through and not spend a lot of time. But I've been going through pines and now I'm finally breaking into some aspens and I'm suddenly seeing more lanes like this, so. Uh, maybe that means something. As I cross this barrier here, it suddenly looks a lot more interesting than it had for, from below. Because this top, brightly covered tree, that's the butt portion of it up in the air, and it did not break off over near there. And as I go this direction, that lower branch right there that I had to step over that's the butt portion and that didn't uh, originate there and this is kind of a knot as I would call it wedged between trees and you got one two three four five six that are wedged between those two trees which seems low probability they could all fall in that one spot and it looks like a barrier to what's further up above. So we'll see. Okay, here appears to be a very old wigwam structure that most of the upright members are gone. The reason being, this is up on a hillside. I can't possibly see how this tangle could have come from a microburst wind. And several of these have the butt portions up in the air, like right there, and like this one here. Well, it's behind the tree. You can just see it peeking out there. And then there's another little structure right here. Now this could be wind driven, if this was by itself, but it's not. And remember, this is up hill from the last structure and then that last ground fence that I thought I saw, that I thought was there. So there's a number of big trees. I haven't gone over to see if uh, those have been moved yet, but I'll walk over and take a look. Okay, I uh, climbed up here to the end of this draw, and I've come right to where there's a cliff face up there, and that's a spring in front of me. At least something that catches water and holds it. I can tell because there's a little pond right there. And it's marshy on its way up. I'm not going to actually look over the edge, but I'm sure there's at least a little mud slick, if not a pond, right there. But I'm right here at the head of this. I'll tell you, it'd be a great place to water and be very concealed. There's no hunting in this area. And I'm seeing tree structures, but they all look very old. You know, after the last couple areas I've gone into that are fairly remote, it appears that uh, these creatures, when they're in here, are selecting the area near the active campsites, campgrounds, probably because there's junk and all sorts of easy pickings, I'm guessing. Uh, and people just don't get out and walk around very much anymore, so they can be nearby and nobody disturbs them. That's just my opinion, and, you know, I could be... Uh, Three sheets to the wind on that, but uh, that's what the evidence seems to point to. This is my highest point. This is a bunch of uh, sticks piled up against something here, but I can't say that that's not natural. But this is kind of the forest, how pretty it is, just me and... Couple of chattering squirrels off 
There's a couple of lean-tos over that way, or leaning trees. I'm going to walk over there and take a look, but a beautiful fall day. Really nice. Very quiet, peaceful. It's surprisingly warm in the canopy of these pines. I came through the parking lot down there before I started up and there was frost and some little puddles in the shade. But I would say 10 to 15 degrees warmer. There's no, sh no uh, um, wind in here and uh, you know the ground's all soft, not at all crackly or frozen. Really nice. This appears to be a lean-to that's fallen over. The supporting structure's rotted. And I say that because a couple of these are large here at the end. Not just a bunch of branches. There's a whole bunch of them lying parallel to each other. Right there. And this cross member that's here probably rotted and fell down. And behind that looks like maybe that could have been part of a structure that was upright those upright ones but you know maybe maybe not but there's a fair number of leaning trees and that in the area scattering but it's all old I would say 10 years old who knows maybe 20 years old it's been here a while and near that possible structure here's a bunch of leans again these all appear old uh, basically aspens again leaned up here in the pines a few of them they'll have bark, uh, some stripped away, partially stripped anyway. But again, these seem that they've been here a while and they've started to fall in on, the, on themselves. So, now in my mind, no doubt about it, this is an old structure. And it's different than the others, at least in the Aspens. That top one, bent across and down, is a pine. And it's bent over, and it's holding down that what looks like an aspen. Both of those are rooted that are in that X. And then the large one that comes across coming towards the camera goes underneath this long one here. That appears to be an aspen. And then it goes underneath again, another tree right there. And that one, I see no evidence that that was rooted right there. Though you've got the root type structure right there, or near it. And the other more slender one coming my direction then goes under this tree, which is, appears to be rooted there and pushed over and leaning up in, into that tree. And uh, I guess that's the well, direction that is south. I guess that is. But no doubt, this this couldn't be natural. Now, invariably, it probably had a lot of uh, uh, cross branches on it. This is similar to the structure I found near down near um, Maple Lake. And it was made similar to this. This is kind of structure that uh, scouts are taught, but would not have been able to put it under the logs here like this. Uh, but the way this is pinned, just way too much weight involved here. This, this, this is not natural, and this was not made by any scouts or any couple of guys in the woods. This is really neat. But this is old, so probably hasn't been used in five years or who knows longer. But uh, the pine still uh, got some bend there, so maybe it was less time than that. And this is not far from the top. So, very interesting. I missed that on the way in here. Look at that. All those big tall trees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Big, big ones. Fifty, sixty feet tall, all leaning up here. That sure doesn't seem like that could be accidental to me. It's much more impressive than I, and I think I walked right through that. Or right by it, but was too close to notice it. And there they all go up there. I'm in a huge teepee.
Okay, I walked underneath this so I realized what it was. That long pole right there is fallen in between or been wedged in between those two uprights. And then they form with this other tree that's been pushed over from the other direction. A large A structure, kind of an arch. And somewhat over the trail that you follow up this. That's kind of neat. But again, that uh, one that's fallen in between those two, I don't know how in the world it could have ever done that naturally. Uh, it'd be so tight. In fact, uh, it's not even wedged there until the what, uh, the tree on the back side, with the oldest one there, is pushed over so that this uh, tree can be pushed wedged in between them. Anyway, really fascinating.